what's on my desk today? Today we're going to take a look at the Wanderer archetype. Now I've gone through this entire archetypes deck and it's not covered in here. They don't have a wanderer or an explorer or a nomad or a restless soul. So we're going to take a look at that in today's episode. And the reason I wanted to cover this one is because recently I went on a short trip myself. I went to Malaga, Spain. And what I'll do is I'll put some footage in as I'm talking so that you can see where I went. You can see what the streets are like. You can see what the cute little shops are like. And basically, I went there for four days. My friend just happened to be there. She invited me. She said, look, why don't you come for a short break? If you don't have readings on at the moment, come and have a little summer holiday. And I did. I just happened to have the time. I happened to have a bit of spare money. And I thought, why don't I do this? Because winter's going to come up and I won't be able to go anywhere. I'll be, you know, indoors making lots of videos. So I thought I might as well enjoy the summer sun while I can. And it was such a beautiful trip. Every day of being away felt like pure reward. It was really, really amazing. And I haven't had a holiday for a very long time I said that to one of my friends and she said hang on you were in Sydney recently and I was like oh yeah but that was at home that's different whereas this was actually exploring somewhere brand new and then when I came back actually I did come down with a chest infection I was not well I think I picked that up here you know because I went to the Cafe Nero to get a sandwich when I came back and um yeah I I think I caught the illness here I don't know but I became very ill for a time and then, then that's why I haven't been posting videos for ages so thank you to everyone for being so patient thank you as well to the two clients who I had to shift to this week and thank you to my dear client on Thursday last Thursday we had a session and she was so amazingly kind I was like coughing throughout and she was super kind and you know so thank you everyone uh, for being lovely about that yeah I do tend to um, come down with things now and then I think it's my body's way of sort of making sure I rest because otherwise I just I tend not to I'm always fidgeting about doing something so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this wanderer archetype now I will share with you the rules that I have put together and I've got four interesting people that we're going to take a look at and what I'll do is I'll uh, this time what I'll do is instead of talking through all the people and then showing you all the charts, I'm going to talk through the person, show you the chart, talk through the person, show you the chart. So let me bring up the rules first. Um, right, there we go. So what rules do I have for the Wanderer Explorer archetype? Now, well, actually, let's just take a little look at these two words here. How are they different? Well, the Wanderer, what I'm looking at here with a Wanderer, I do think there's something to do with aimlessly wandering or, you know, there's a restless quality to the person. It's like you have to go somewhere. You can't just be still. You can't just be at home or life will make it so that you have to go abroad to get your success. This is the kind of thing I'm really looking at here. Explorer, I tend to think this archetype is the difference between these two, wanderer and explorer. Explorer, I tend to think you are looking for something new. You are actively seeking. Explorer could be a little bit like Pioneer, which we already covered. By the way, on Pioneer, I just want to interject very quickly and say that I found a new one. His name is, I believe, Mosh Moshe Safdi. I'll put his name and information on the screen so you can take a look but when I was watching a video uh, the video was by I think it's called the B1M and the title of the video was how a 23 year old solved urban sprawl and basically this incredibly talented young architect he figured out this new way of uh, doing large housing building something like that anyway they said that he's a pioneer in the video and I thought oh I've got to look up his chart and then sure enough in the d10 I found the pioneer archetype was there so yeah I think this 
archetypal thing is is going to be quite cool actually and i'm going to turn all of these into a book eventually so stick with me uh, as we go through all of these but um explorer what's the difference between explorer and a wanderer i do think i mean wanderer you're kind of aimlessly wandering explorer you know you are seeking you are looking for something new or you want to uncover or discover something new uh, nomad i've got here as well the nomad this is a person i do believe now let's have a look i did look up the definition of a nomad nomad definition it's got here people that travel from place to place has no permanent home yes and and that is really one of the things that i'm looking at in this set i'm looking at the person who doesn't really have a fixed home Okay, so this person doesn't have a fixed home and they need to travel. They feel more at home when they do travel. The other thing, and so I'm, out, I'm now thinking of another position where um, this, this could be the case as well. But it's all right. Let's, let's stick on with what we've got here. Um, the rule is I've got it here. But yeah, we're looking for someone, someone who's home. They don't have a fixed home. They feel more at home when they're traveling. They find excitement in going places. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I'm looking at here. So the main rule that I've got here is Mars in the fourth house. Okay, this really is the quintessential hallmark thing that I'm looking for. When you've got a Mars in the fourth house, these are people who don't settle down quickly or easily. They don't perhaps put roots down uh either so i've seen this in life and i've grown up seeing these people mars in the fourth house and they have sort of international lives they may not buy property until they're you know even late 40s 50s 60 that's the time where they might buy their first place you know uh this is a position where mars in that fourth house there is, is just a lot of energy makes a person very restless makes a person want to travel move about all that kind of thing it can mean that you know you, your success you will find it overseas as opposed to in your home country okay because we've got that big mars energy there in the fourth house of home you could also be looking for so what other type of rules are we looking at here so mars in a watery house okay so that's houses four eight and twelve that will make a person, I do believe, restless. They won't, you know, um, yeah, they'll they'll find more stability in traveling is, is what I've seen with these people. Or their career will have an international flavor or there'll be something about them needing to move about. You could also see fourth lord in the seventh house. You could see fourth lord in the twelfth house. These are also things. So fourth Lord is your Lord of home. And so where is your home? If it's in the seventh house, your home is abroad. If it's in the 12th house, your home is abroad again. Uh, now, the other thing I'm looking at with the fourth house is I'm looking at challenge to the fourth house or big energy in the fourth house or disruption in the fourth house. And I really am looking at Saturn or Mars. So, for example, Saturn in the fourth being aspected by Mars, okay, that can create that kind of big energy effect where you're going to have to move, live abroad, you'll find your success overseas, this kind of thing. Invitation to the seventh house. So this is now invitation to the seventh house. That's really Rahu in the seventh. Okay, Rahu is inviting you into the seventh house. Rahu is inviting you to go overseas and explore and all that kind of thing. I do have my Rahu in the seventh. Uh, and I, yes, I, I have traveled uh, quite a lot actually. Uh, but I even, I don't count myself as a wanderer archetype though. Uh, and that's because I have fixed energies in Kendra position. We'll come to that in a moment. But yeah, we're looking for an invitation to the seventh house uh, that will take you abroad. I'm also going to add in here, um, let's see, invitation 
to the 10th house, all right? That will take you potentially overseas through your career as well. And invitation to the 12th house. So the, so invitation to the 10th house, Rahu in the 10th, okay? Rahu will encourage you to come out into the world. Where it's tricky with Rahu Ketu axis is like we have to assess certain things. Like if you have a lot of planets uh, with Ketu, maybe you've got Ketu Lord with Ketu and things like that, then you will be more at home. But then if you've got Rahu in the 10th, Rahu Lord with Rahu, then you'll be very much being encouraged by your chart to go out into the world, to travel, to explore things. Especially, for example, you've got a Rahu Jupiter in the 10th. Okay, that's a big, that's a chart that's really encouraging you to go out into the world, to explore. Don't be at home, you know. Yes, invitation to the 12th house, so that's a Rahu in the 12th. Or, you know, you could say strong planets in the 12th as well. Same as the seventh house, strong planets in the seventh, same as the tenth house, strong planets in the tenth. These are all encouraging you to go out into the world. Uh, dual energies in candor position, that's another thing that can cause you to not have stability in terms of where you live or where you are based. Uh, dual energies in candor position, so dual energy in, in you know, in the in the fourth. That, that can give you two homes, for example, okay? Uh, so dual energies, there I mean something like Gemini, Virgo, uh, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Now, what about Jupiter? I'm sure some of you are listening to all this going, hang on a minute, she's not talking about Jupiter. And Jupiter is the big travel planet. What? She's not talking about Jupiter, she's talking about Mars. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I'm talking more about Mars. But it's Mars kind of destabilizes. Um, when Mars is in the fourth, it really uh, kind of destabilizes you. It doesn't. It doesn't allow you to rest at home. So I've I've seen this so often in in people's charts. Interestingly, the person I was traveling with, she has her Mars in the fourth. Great traveler, you see. And I don't have my Mars in the fourth. Uh, even though I've got my Rahu in the seventh, I've got planets in the seventh. I've got a lot of encouragement to come out into the world. And I do, but I've got fixed energies in in Kendra position. And I'm not a, a traveler type. I'm a, I'm a person who I'll have a fixed base. And yeah, I'll do a little four days in Malaga or I'll do a little four days in Venice or something. You know, I'll do a little three day, four days here, there. But I don't... I'm not a I'm not a traveler traveler or a wanderer or an explorer. I'm, I'm not that. But as uh, I've got written here, Rahu in the ninth or Rahu in Sagittarius can give rise to a traveler. You're going to do long distance travel. I tend to think with the ninth house as well, uh, you've got a purpose there. Whereas with twelfth house, foreign type stuff, you don't particularly have any purpose. You know, um, you, you can be a bit lost, a bit nomadic with with the 12th or with Pisces. It's so wide open, you know, um, that you become this wanderer, explorer type person. And what about the nakshatras? One of you have asked, hey, look at the nakshatras as well. Good point. Uh, nakshatra is lauded by Jupiter, I've got here, as being significant to travel. But if you have experience, with the nakshatras and would like to share what you know um, i'd love to hear from you uh if, if you've got some good experience there with the nakshatras all right so let's take a look at some people who are wanderers who are these wanderers okay we've got bruce chatwin i'm gonna bring him up uh as an example who was bruce chatwin bruce chatwin was a travel writer and I've got this article here by the New York Times I'll read a little bit of this to you so it'll introduce who he was so it says here Bruce Chatwin one of the last great explorers 40 years after the publication of his groundbreaking travelogue so definitely a travel writer here uh, in Patagonia the author's writing and style have lost none of their power to bewitch and inspire. 
got here in 1972, Bruce Chatwin left England and began to travel. This was not so long ago, and yet the world back then was still so unmapped. And it was, you know, it's really interesting. I don't know too much about Bruce Chatwin, but the reason I know him is because I grew up in Australia and I saw a documentary about him. This was on the TV a long time ago. And this was in the 90s when we were all still watching TV. And um, there's a documentary about him and it showed that, you know, here's a man who lived with the Aborigines of Australia, so the original people of Australia. He lived with them and he found out all these incredible new things about their culture, about their civilization, about their wisdom, he figured out all these things and he wrote this beautiful book called The Song Lines. And I was really amazed that, wow, it takes an Englishman to come and learn about, you know, the Aboriginals of Australia. You know, there was no Aussie who spent the time figuring these things out. Um, I always think English people are great travellers, prolific, amazing travellers. And, yeah, here we have, you know, uh, an explorer in Bruce Chatwin, he he would spend time with Indigenous people and there are all these wonderful photos of him with these dusty hiking boots and his many travel diaries and, you know, his moleskin. I believe he made moleskin famous, didn't he? Moleskin diaries and all that. So, yeah, I've got him down as the wanderer explorer. Now he's got an exalted sun in the seventh house and Rahu in the twelfth. Let's take a look at his chart. So I'm going to share the screen. There we go. Okay, this should work. So we can see his D1 natal chart here. And look at that jam-packed seventh house. Okay, I mean, you just can't look anywhere else, can you? And not only is it jam-packed, so we've got a lot of invitation energy. It's suggesting come and take a look at the seventh house. You want to be here, Bruce. So not only is it jam-packed, uh, with what you'd call a stelium, four or more planets, he's got this exalted sun. Okay, so exalted sun. I know that stelium is a Western term, by the way, but it's all right. I, I use it anyway. Uh, here in Vedic astrology, it's okay to use some Western terms too. Now, he's got his exalted sun here in the seventh. All right, and this is not just any exalted sun. This is miracle degree, 29 degrees, 29.50, wow. Um, miracle degree, it's his Atma Karaka, planet, planet with the highest degrees. It's indicating, you know, his soul's desire, indicating what he longs to do, what he really wants to do in this incarnation. And in this un incarnation, he definitely wants to travel the world. If you've got a lot of planets here in your seventh house, you will definitely see the world, uh, especially if Rahu's in here as well. His Rahu is in the 12th. Okay, so I do think that, yeah, th this is quite interesting. His Rahu is in the 12th. And the 12th to me, it is, so 9th and 12th, these are Jupiterian houses. And I think the ninth is a pilgrimage. This is like if you're traveling via the ninth, you have some purpose, you have some mission, you have something that you want to do. You'll be specific about it. There's fire here, there's leadership here. Okay. So that's why I don't particularly count Jupiter as being part of the wanderer archetype as such. A wanderer is, there's there's got to be some quality of, you know, Maybe you're going here, but you end up here kind of thing. Actually, I'm just thinking, I'm realizing Ramdas was a bit of a, a wanderer uh, and he's got his Rahu. Let's let's bring him up. Why not? Uh, Ramdas, because Ramdas, look at that, Rahu in Pisces in the 10th. Ramdas was originally on his way to Japan, you know, and, and so this is the quality of of, of exploration of wandering that I'm looking for here. Thank you, Ramdas. That really helps me in this conversation about Bruce Chatwin because, yeah, this this Rahu in the 12th is, you know, maybe you set out to go here, but you end up going here kind of thing. And that's what Ramdas did. He he set off to go to 
Japan. He ends up in India. And, you know, he, he didn't need to go any further from that point. Uh, and I think with Bruce Chatwin as well, I'm sure, I don't know too much about him, but what I would say here is that I'm sure his plans would have been extremely flexible. This is not, say, for example, Rahu in the ninth. Rahu in the ninth, which I would imagine would have a mission and would achieve it. Whereas here you're kind of wandering. Perhaps you don't have a goal as such. So I like Bruce Chatwin for the wanderer archetype because I think he's got that quality. Firstly, he's got that very, you know, very inviting seventh house, inviting him to the world to explore, to travel. And then Rahu in the 12th is giving that quality of, you know, maybe we're going here, but oh, look, we're going to explore this thing. And I didn't know about that. And now that I'm here, let's check it out kind of thing. Let's take a look at the next person. So I'm going to bring them up on the screen. Uh, how do I do that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Next person we've got here is um, Ernest Hemingway. All right, I've got him down as a wanderer explorer. Isn't that interesting that I'm not going to feature him in the writer uh, category? I can. He does have the writer archetype featuring in his charts, but I've actually got him here as a wanderer explorer. I actually think it's his travels that made him interesting. Uh, again, I don't know too much about him. I would need to do some more study but let's take a look at his chart and I'll show you why he is appropriate for this episode Ernest Hemingway Ernest sorry I keep calling him Ernest um Ernest Hemingway yeah look at that we got this big energy here in the fourth house so and it's got aspect from Mars so it's like how's he going to find any rest at home he's not he's going to find rest elsewhere you know uh th this is not I would imagine with this kind of setup you wouldn't want to be at home you you would really want nothing more than to go somewhere and to make your life about going somewhere or being somewhere else and I think that you know his his chart indicates that you know definitely he'll be finding success abroad. Uh, he's also got Rahu Moon conjunct here in Sagittarius in the fifth. So again, perhaps his the quality of his travels weren't so. Perhaps they were more purposeful than someone like Bruce Chatwin, who I would imagine. And this is something I will have to explore if I'm going to write this in a. In a book one day, I would do my research and my homework properly, but uh, I do think that perhaps Ernest Hemingway was more purposeful in his travels, whereas I could imagine someone like Bruce Chatwin might accidentally stumble upon incredible things just by his wandering. There's something that, like the quality of wandering is perhaps more there. Let's take a look at the next one which is let's have a look who's the next one. Oh yes of course Anthony Bourdain uh, I thought of him today because I was thinking about and I thought of him maybe a few days ago because I was kind of you know asking the angels all right we're gonna do the wanderer give me somebody <laughs> and uh, this guy popped into my head yeah so I think he's a really good example of the wanderer archetype or the explorer archetype or somebody who like for whom travel is in integral in the life, like it's part of, it's required by the success. Okay, so, it, you know, if, if, if he's not packing a bag and going somewhere, then he's not being himself kind of thing. Uh, so we've got Wanderer, Explorer, Archetype. We've got Mars in the fourth in Pisces. Yeah, boy, was I happy to see that. And Rahu in the 12th. It's all in D9 though. All right, so we're going to take a look at his chart just now. But this is really interesting because this is yet more proof. I've always seen this, that D9 starts to open up after age 42. Once you initiate your Rahu at age 42, 
there's something about D9 opening up more and more and more. This is whether you're married or not. And I have seen this and look at this. We've got here an entry in Wikipedia. It says here, Bourdain hosted many food and travel series, including his first show, A Cook's Tour. That's 2002 to 2003. So this Cook's Tour, this him going abroad and cooking and making beautiful things and but the, the abroad part, that really happened for him 2002 onwards. Now, he was 36 years of age, uh, 46 years of age, sorry. He was 46 years of age at that time. I will double check that and make sure, and I'll put something on the screen just to indicate that that's correct. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at his chart and you will see how D9 is indicating. So now you have a look at his birth chart. Okay, and we've got Mars in a watery place. So I am sure, now I did classify that as a rule. I said Mars in a watery house. Okay, with all of these examples, I needed the time because I wanted the house positions. So here, you know, we've got an indicator of someone who's going to enjoy travel even in the birth chart. But where it gets really exciting is here in D9, because this is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. Mars in a watery house and in a watery sign. Perfect. And we've got, uh, what else was there? Rahu, yes, Rahu in the 12th. So there's some quality of, you know, wandering. There's some quality of exploring and perhaps not with a fixed goal or a fixed purpose I'm sure that there would have been a lot of creativity that happened during the journey and and as they were going they figured things out or found things or inspired something it inspired something or you know like this uh all of that would have would have happened let's take a look at one more example and this is someone I do not know very much about but He's absolutely perfect and <laughs> he meets the requirement. Um, Alfred Russell Wallace. Okay, so I was thinking about somehow as I was going through my famous people's folder and I was looking for, okay, who's going who's gonna to be part of this episode? And somehow I looked at Charles Darwin and then I remembered watching a documentary by a comedian in this country, Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey did a really good uh, documentary, I think it was, on this guy here, Alfred Russell Wallace. And Bill Bailey showed how this, this guy is the original Charles Darwin. He's the real deal guy who figured out a lot of things that Charles Darwin is famous for having figured out. But this guy figured it out first. And... In the Wikipedia entry, it says that Alfred Russell Wallace was an English naturalist explorer. There it is. Geographer, anthropologist, biologist, and illustrator. And I do believe he went into like the Amazon jungles and he figured things out with his own two hands. And he personally was there in the places figuring things out. So an integral part of his success is that he's wandering, is that he's in the location, they're doing the stuff. So let's take a look at his chart and you'll be able to see that he meets the requirements very beautifully. Um, again, if I was to, okay, that's Ramdas. Whoops, wrong one. Where is he? There he is. I've got you and McGregor up here. I'll just talk about him. I don't have a screen for him, so we'll just talk about him briefly afterwards. But You'll see here that we've got Mars in the fourth house, and that's really what I wanted to wanted to see. Not only is it here in in the fourth, it's exalted. That's powerful. Okay, so this is a man who has to go places. Uh, there's no way he's just going to put his feet up at home. It's going to be hard to. It's going to be hard to. So, it, this is also known as um, the soldier in the kitchen placement. Like soldiers all dressed up for battle, but he's instructed to, you know. Um, to be working in the kitchen and how frustrating that is and I think it's, it, it is you might be bottled up for a while but you'll, you'll you'll eventually get very frustrated and you'll have to go elsewhere and you will uh, and especially with with the setup that we've got here this is you look at the lord of fourth lord is in the seventh 
So his home, you know, uh, will be abroad or he will spend a lot of time overseas or there'll be some, the world is calling him out, you know, to, to be out there in the world. Um, these two are in Parivartana exchange as well. So really fascinating. I mean, I'd love to study his chart a lot more in depth uh, and his life. I will get around to that. The last chart I'll just quickly show you is when I typed into Google famous nomads, Ewan McGregor came up. Now, I don't know anything about Ewan McGregor. I just know it's a famous name and he's been in movies. Um, but again, we've got this Mars in the fourth house here. And apparently he is a famous nomad. So I hope this episode has shed some light on these restless souls, these restless people who need to go and travel and be somewhere and, you know, uh, where the energy is possibly a bit like a pressure cooker at home or, you know, yeah, as I said, the, the soldier who's dressed up for battle but he's assigned to wash dishes, how frustrating that is. And eventually you will be frustrated enough to, to leave that situation and explore, to travel. You'll find your success overseas as well. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a really interesting placement that, you know, creates a, a very interesting life as well. If you have this placement, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Hopefully I'm going to get on with the writer archetype next. We're going to feature a lot of writers and that should be a really good episode. Also, if you want to be one of these archetypes and you feel that your chart, you don't have the requirements and you're like, well, but I really love travel or I really want to go places you can don't be limited by anything that I say here all right um Rumi always says unfold your own myth and yeah I believe in that too all right well thanks so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.